Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod in Mudrunner, but b before I get into the video, I want to go over everybody that had a hand in this mod, because th there was a lot of people that had a hand in this mod. Now, it's a 2014 Can-Am Renegade with a model from Bobster, uh, put in game for Genesis, aka Psycho, with a horizontal tread tire by the B-Gamer, assassinators and TIS rims uh, made by Capone, custom sounds from YouTube converted by Frog, and snorkel add-on, cooler add-on, and proper independent suspension. So, with all of that out of the way, now we're going to go ahead and start driving it, but not before we load it up onto a trailer. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab the 2007 Ram, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get these things loaded up. So, we're going to go ahead and swap over to the split tread one, which I believe, oh, that's the one in the back. I meant the one in the front. Uh, we're going to go ahead and swap to the one in the front first, and I am also going to make sure that it's fully full filled up with fuel before I load it on the trailer, just because I don't want to have to worry about fuel later on down the road um and these things are they're pretty crazy like they're genuinely pretty insane not gonna lie uh let's go ahead and grab the split tread one now this thing is also like the tires are quite a bit wider on this one too i'm gonna try and distribute the weight a little bit better because that one is like all the way at the front let's let's stay right there actually and let's move the other one just a tad back because it's really hurting the weight distribution on the trailer right now. Oh, God. Okay, stop right there. Right there. Right there. I think the trailer kind of likes the way the weight is dis distributed. I think. Um, you can see the truck squatting a little bit. Not too much, but definitely a little bit. Oh, boy. Okay, so that had a lot to do with the ramps as well. Like, a lot to do with the ramps. So now, let's go ahead and see how these things do in the mud after we tow them down to the, uh, the mud bog area. Now, I think we're probably going to take one of them down the mud trail, and we're probably going to take the other into some of the actual mud bogs. So, with that being said, I think they're going to, I think they're probably going to do well. I really hope they'll do pretty well. Um, I think that they're, I think they're going to do better in the mud than a lot of other ATVs that I've tried before. By the way, I did not expect the truck to slide out that much. That was, that was a lot. I mean, <laughs> that was a lot more than I expected the truck to slide out, to be brutally honest. I'm going to go up into high and see if I can get this thing to sort of pick up some pace here so we can get to the trail a bit quicker. Oh, easy now. I'm just going to be real light on it. Real light on it in low three. Just not like, not go too crazy with it. All right, we got this muddy creek trail right here. I'm going to go ahead and take one of them down there and see how she does. And then the other one is going to go into the mud bogs. So let's go ahead and stop right here and lower that ramp down. Doesn't necessarily have to be all the way down, but we're going to go ahead and stop that engine. And I believe the split tread one is in the back. Yep, I was correct on that. Just roll it right off the back and refill it with an instant start. These things are loud, by the way. These things are really loud. I really hope they're not, like, peaking my audio like crazy. But they handle sort of like a... Sort of like, if you can imagine, a miniature mud truck with... Uh, a miniature mud truck with independent suspension at all four corners. It's a little bit odd, but once you get used to it, it's not bad, actually. Like, it's, it's definitely not the worst thing in the world uh, once you get used to how they drive. The only, like, trick with that is actually genuinely getting used to how they drive. Because, as you can see, I am not used to how they drive yet. But I do enjoy driving them. I mean, like, they're they're fun to drive. They're fun to, like, they're fun to look at. I mean, like, they're not, they're not something you would normally see, it, you know, in a game like this. So, seeing them out here and seeing them, like, available to be used is definitely not, you know, while it's not common... It's definitely something that I think, you know, people could definitely get, definitely get used to. I mean, there's definitely a lot of room for more quads and ATVs in the, uh, in the Mudrunner slash, well, now almost SnowRunner just ecosystem, I think. And obviously the modding community is going to do whatever it does with that. But, you know, it's all sort of going to follow the idea of wherever the demand is. I mean... The demand for vehicles like this will dictate whether or not the modding community follows this train of modified ATVs. 
but I think the modified ATV and modified side-by-side -side, uh, sort of community definitely has the opportunity to really take off um, towards the uh, towards the beginning of the modding cycle in SnowRunner because once SnowRunner gets started, you're going to see a whole new modding cycle start. I mean, we definitely see a little bit of uh, winding down happening in the Mudrunner modding uh, community right now because a lot of a lot of modders are just starting to get ready for SnowRunner, and I understand why. I genuinely understand why. I mean, it makes sense. They're wanting to start to prepare for the the game that they're potentially going to be making mods for for the next few coming years. And you know, when you're planning out your modding cycle for the next you know next coming few years. I mean, that's a lot of time, you know? That's a good amount of time. Now, I do want to go ahead and say that this thing is actually really, really, really detailed in terms of, like, you can see the little fan going on the radiator up there. You can see the freaking, like, the coilovers moving, the arms moving. Everything is animated really, really well. Um, there's even a proper first-person view. And even though I'm not a big first-person view guy, this is a first-person view that I could see myself using a little bit more because there's, like, you're actually sitting where you, like, you're literally, you know, looking where you would be looking if you were on the, like, on this quad bike in real life. Now, I do, I do want to say that it looks like they put a lot of work into making sure the bars turned in a realistic way. And you could definitely tell that. You could definitely tell that Frog put a lot of work into that because they do turn realistically. And that's not something that can be said for every quad that we've seen in the past. Now, does that mean that like every quad going forward is gonna have that? Maybe from Frog, but I don't know if, if any of the other if, if any of the other quads going forward are gonna have that. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and park this guy in just a second. We're gonna park him right here. So we're gonna park him right there and then we're gonna get back in the Dodge Start it back up, and then we're going to take this guy down to one of the nearby mud holes where it can really dig in and sink in and see uh, if it can actually, um, see if it can actually, like, make it through. I think I might just throw it at the bounty hole right off the bat. I mean, that really, oh, you know what I want to do? Oh, I want to take it around the racetrack. Yes, taking it around the racetrack is definitely going to be one of the best things to do with it. I mean, it may not work. But at least we're going to find out whether or not it works. I'm, I mean, I, I think it'll be a blast. All right, let's get this thing started up. From a stop, they're, they're genuinely quick. Like, they are genuinely quick from a stop. I just don't know how fast they are, like, overall, you know? So let's find out. That's fifth. Uh, almost made it. I mean... Maybe not the fastest thing in the world, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Get it? Oh, it almost makes it all the way over. Like, it almost makes it all the way over. If it was a tad faster, it would it would definitely make it. I would love to get a group of these together and just race them on a map like, you know, on a map like Ledgeview where you have, like, a proper racetrack. But, like, this thing, as you can see, actually, like, kind of almost makes it. I am going to, like jump it into the mud bog though oh come on oof oh my god that's so deep you can't even see you can't even see the freaking quad anymore uh let's see let's recall you real quick there bud and now let's take this thing to the bounty hole and see what it can properly do i love this first person view it's great it actually makes you feel like you're on you know like that you're it makes you feel like you're on it you know all right let's go See how far it gets in high before it's completely bogged out. Oh, it's bogged out. <laughs> that didn't take super long. It, oh God, we're sinking it. We are sinking it. Oh my God, we are, wow, we are genuinely sinking it now. I mean, it can do it, but it's definitely not the happiest camper in the world about it. Yeah, it can definitely do it, but... Oh, yo, that's sick. The light, like, the fact that all the lights work, that's sick. Does that have any rear lights? Yes, that's awesome. I love that. I love the exhaust setup, too. Really, really sick looking. So, I feel like the general consensus of this is that, like, will it, will it make it through the bounty hole? 
yes, but will you have to be going very, very slowly to do it? Also, yes. Now, I haven't obviously gone all the way through it, but I, I mean, if it's, if it's come this far, there's really no reason why it, it shouldn't be able to make it the rest of the way. It's just going to be, well, it's just going to be a little bit of a, little bit of a slow go until we get there. I think the other one definitely has, like, the other one is definitely in a little bit better of an environment for the type of vehicle that it is. I mean, a mud trail definitely seems like where this thing belongs. Let's, whoa, tried to run it in high, got the front axle caught up. It's definitely not hard to get it to go into high, which is really nice. I mean, I, I have to admit that, like, having that as an option to just, like, throw it in high and it usually just wants to go um, is really nice. Even in mud like this, I mean, look at that. It's just chewing it up. Now, you do have to have a little bit of pace beforehand, obviously. If you just kind of slam it into high without much pace, uh, it'll just go it'll just go straight into spinning. Uh, but if you, have, if you have some decent pace already... Um, it will take off, and it will do pretty well for you. I mean, in mud like this, it just chews it up. It just absolutely chews it up. Yeah, absolutely just walks through that stuff, man. It's really impressive. Come on. Let's see how far we can Tomcat gear ourselves for all. Tomcat gear only worked for so long. Tomcat gear kind of let us down there. Although, to be fair, we did kind of, like, dive into a river with it. So, that's also partially a bit of a limitation for Tomcat gear. It, rivers are... Uh, rivers are no guarantee when using Tomcat gear. There you go. Not... I mean, not bad. It's... It almost looks like something... I mean, yeah, it kind of looks like something that, like... It's like a mixture between, like, you know, what a... a like, a... Off-road enthusiast, like, you know, a mud bog, like, off-road enthusiast. It looks like a mixture between what, like, an adult off-road enthusiast would build and what, like, you know, like, it, like, you know, like, like their inner 10-year-old would also build. And I feel like that's the, gr like, that's the best part about, you know, just all these big, huge mud vehicles is the fact that, like, Yes, they partially look like, you know, a 10-year-old, like, came up with the idea, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, and I'm sure some people will take that in a bad way. They'll be like, what do you mean? But no, like, for real, I genuinely mean that in, in the way of, like, they, they're built for fun, you know? Like, they're built to have fun. They're built to go out in the mud and have fun. And I feel like, I mean, anybody that would get, like, genuinely offended by what I just said, I feel like is missing the point of just off-roading in general because, off like, you build these vehicles to have fun with them, and if you can't have a sense of humor about them, then what are you doing? You know, then, then what are you doing? What are you doing? Go. Oh, God. Nope. It did not want that. Oh, but wants it now, but now it just wants to throw mud everywhere. Oh, it hooked up there. Oh, then, nah, then it goes back to spinning again. Yeah, then it goes back to spinning again. It's kind of a weird mix. Oh, God. Should I attempt this hole? Yes. The answer is yes. Oh, boy. Oh, God. I should not have attempted that hole. That hole was a bad idea. That hole was a horrible idea. Oh, it's going to make it, though. It's going to make it, though. Come on. Come on. Emerge from the depths. Come on. You will emerge victorious from the great depths. Yes. Yes. God, I love this thing. This thing's amazing. It's actually, like, it's genuinely fun, and I really think they did an awesome job with it. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you all later.